Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, uh, Pharmagest. Myself, Dr. Haimavati. In the present video, we will be discussing about what is molecular docking and what are the different algorithms which are present in docking. So, let's begin our video. What is docking? So, in molecular docking, uh, what we try to do? Suppose we have a protein. So, this is a protein which I have represented in the surface representation. And then a ligand comes and binds to this protein. So simply speaking, docking is binding of two molecules. And when we study in uh, drug design, so the generally we consider binding between the two molecules that are one is a ligand and the other one is a protein. So when a ligand comes and binds to the protein, what happens? Either it uh, stimulates the protein or it inhibits the protein. How does, how does this happen? So this happens because some kind of interactions take place between the uh, ligand and the protein. So here I, uh, you can see the 2D representation I have given for uh, better understanding. So when the ligand is coming and binding to the protein, an intermolecular complex is formed. So this intermolecular complex, it involves the interaction between the atoms of the ligand and then the residues of the protein. So it is uh, docking is widely used to suggest the binding modes of protein inhibitors. Protein inhibitors means the drugs or small molecules which bind to the protein. And uh, binding pores. So when the ligand binds to the uh, protein the complex takes some orientation or confirmation with respect to the uh, interactions between the two molecules. So this interaction between these two molecules involves uh, the number of degrees of freedom between the molecules at the interface. This is known as binding pose. So in docking, the first uh, definition we need to know is what is docking. So docking is the binding of the protein and ligand uh, simply is docking. And the next one is binding pose. Binding pose is uh, not, it, nothing but which involves the degrees of freedom between these two molecules at the interface. So at the interface, how the ligand interacts with the protein. That is known as the binding pose. So this is another diagram of the same uh, ligand and protein which are interacting. So this is a 3D representation. Here you can see the ligand is in red color sticks and the protein is given in the blue color uh, cartoon representation. And this is uh, for a better view I have given the ligand you can see in the 2D representation and the res residues of the proteins which are interacting with the ligand. Next, how many types of docking are there? We have two types of docking. One is rigid docking and another one is flexible docking. Now coming to rigid docking, what is rigid docking? Suppose we have a protein and this is the active site of the protein. So generally the protein does not have the same active site. So this is only for representation purpose. So consider this as the active site of the protein. And uh, what happens in this rigid docking is, uh, it is the most uh, simplest algorithm which was developed to understand the binding of the protein and ligand. And uh, this was developed by Kunz et al. in 1982. And uh, by using this rigid docking, we obtain molecules with high degree of shape complementarity to the binding site. So what happens here is the program first derives a negative image of the binding site and uh, it uh, derives a negative image of the binding site from the molecular surface of the protein and then this negative image is uh, filled with overlapping spheres having different radius. So you can see uh, the active site of the protein or the binding site of the protein is filled with spheres and these spheres, they touch the active site of the protein at just two points on either side. Then ligand atoms are matched to the 
sphere centers so the sphere center is taken here like this the sphere centers are taken and the ligands are matched to the sphere centers to find the matching set uh, in which all the distances between the ligand atoms in the set are equal to the corresponding sphere center distances within the user, user specified tolerance and then the ligand is oriented within the binding site such that it uh, it becomes the best fit in the active site and this is uh, done using a least square fit uh, function which depends on the atoms to the sphere centers and then the orientation is checked to ensure that there are no unacceptable steric interactions between the atoms of the ligand and the receptor if the orientation is acceptable then the interaction energy is computed to give the score for that binding mode so uh, till now we have discussed what is uh, docking and then what is binding force now we have come to see what is score or the binding score or the binding uh, affinity so when the ligand comes and binds to this uh, protein the energy which is generated for the best fit ligand so that is taken as the score for that binding mode and the new orientations are generated by matching different sets of atoms and sphere centers and the top scoring uh, orientations are retained for subsequent analysis so this is the simplest algorithm which was developed for uh, docking next we have flexible docking and again in flexible docking we have two types of docking so first one in which the ligand is considered flexible and the protein is considered rigid and the next one ligand uh, both the ligand and protein are considered flexible but in protein not the entire protein is considered flexible only the side chains of the protein are considered flexible why this happens is i'll explain now next step part is the ligand is considered flexible and protein is considered rigid so here we will take the active site of the protein and the ligand is taken in this uh, so the protein it does not move the protein active site is stable like that only the ligand is considered flexible uh, so in this the degrees of freedom of ligand are considered in the conformational space and the best fit ligand is obtained now next one is the ligand is flexible and the side chains of protein are flexible so here we are considering both the ligand flexibility and the side chains of protein are flexible suppose we have this protein so this protein i have shown in the cartoon representation so uh, consider that uh, so when you consider the atoms which are present in the protein so it is uh, this protein consider for example it is having some 400 amino acids so when we take the backbone of this protein so it becomes very huge so the number of conformation it takes becomes very computationally expensive that's why we cannot consider protein flexibility so here in this figure the same protein i'm showing so you can see the protein backbone and this red color uh, stick representations are the side chains of the protein so when you remove the backbone of the protein also see we can see there are a number of atoms so there are hundreds of atoms which are present in the side chain of the protein so when you consider the flexibility of the side chain of the protein also the docking problem becomes computationally expensive that means it requires more cpu power and more time to make the calculations when compared to the ligand ligand is very small so the number of conformations you can consider because the ligand size does not increase beyond some hundred of atoms but when you consider the size of a protein there are thousands of atoms so that is why we cannot consider the protein to be flexible uh, only the side chains of the protein are considered flexible in most of the docking programs uh, to simplify it 
and uh, even though we are considering the side chain flexibility the calculations involved are also based on molecular mechanic mechanical calculations that means they are based on approximations so what are this molecular mechanics and what are the approximations we'll see in our future videos for now i have explained what is the difficulty in considering the flexibility of the protein when uh, come when we perform docking so now we'll see what are the different algorithms or search methods in docking so uh, the different algorithms are first one is monte carlo methods genetic algorithm distance geometry and incremental construction algorithm so in flexible docking uh all these four algorithms so most of the softwares they are based on using one or the other algorithms so some softwares use monte carlo methods to perform docking some uh, softwares use genetic algorithm similarly so different softwares they use different algorithms for performing docking so what are monte carlo methods suppose here we have the ligand and we have taken the ligand and when we are making changes in the ligand so uh, a number of iterations are carried out and the internal conformation of the ligand is ch changed uh, for example by rotating it about a bond so what happens when you rotate the ligand above a bond the conformation of the ligand changes and uh, some amount of energy changes will take place and then uh, this uh, con change in conformation will lead to certain energy minima suppose when you uh, plot a diagram between the reaction coordinate and energy when you are making changes in the ligand so different energy minima are generated so this energy minima is having one value and this is higher energy minima and this is lower so the most lower energy minima is considered as the global minima and these are considered as the local minima so most of the softwares on um, we they consider the the global minima so our efforts to generate a confirmation whenever we are using docking or any other program our main aim will be to obtain the confirmation having the global minima and obtaining global minima is not an easy task but uh, the most confirmation which is near to global minima is also selected sometimes so the confirmation is accepted or rejected using the standard metropolis criterion which is based on boltzmann distribution and the energy of the ligand within the binding site is calculated using molecular mechanics now coming to next algorithm genetic algorithm so this genetic algorithm is uh, dependent on genetics so we know what is genetics so most of the science students will be aware of what are genetics so what is genetics so the important uh, part of genetics is the chromosomes which are responsible for the changes in population so when a change in the dna of the chromosome takes place so different populations are evolved and the survival of the fittest takes place so it is a process of evolution and in docking what happens is uh, we consider that each chrom chromosome is coded for the internal conformation and orientation of the ligand and when the orientation and internal conformation changes populations evolve so when you are making changes in the conformations of the ligands changes takes place in the chromosomes and you get new populations and the score of each docked structure within the uh, binding site acts as the fitness function so that you can be able to select the individuals for the next iteration so uh, so this is what is genetic algorithm so it is simple uh, when you compare it with to the genetics of science what happens so as you are making the changes in conformation so the conformation which is having the best value will have the best fitness function and that uh, 
population will be selected as the final uh, ligand so the solutions uh, that means the when you are making the changes when when you are making iterations you will get a number of solutions and finally uh, and until all or most of the solutions are converging on one result that is taken as the best population best population means the best conformation of the ligand and uh, this genetic algorithm has been uh, implemented in autodoc and gold i think uh, previously i didn't uh, mention about monte carlo methods so um, the monte carlo methods it is used in uh, ligand fit and qxp software and genetic algorithm has been implemented in autodoc and gold next one is distance geometry algorithm so the distance geometry algorithm uses bond length and bond angle information for building a matrix containing upper and lower limits of distances between the organic compound that means here the constraints are combined to form a distance matrix so we know what a matrix is and the, the matrix contains different variables x y z and variables so here the variables are nothing but the uh, bond angle and bond length and this bond angle bond length uh, variables are used to construct the uh, matrix for this uh, docking problem and then this all the constraints are combined to form a distant matrix from which energetically feasible conformations are taken or calculated mathematically and the results will be depending on the stra starting geometries of the initial set of molecules so here i have not uh, drawn the ligand structure i have just given uh, two lines that means i indicating the bond uh, length and bond angle of the ligand so what i have said is uh, the main thing the distance geometry is mainly dependent on bond length and bond angle so to represent that i have draw, taken this as bond length and bond angle into the active site so actually all the bond length and bond angles of the ligand are considered and a distance matrix is generated and then it is used to generate a number of conformers binding within the binding site and a set of force constants between the postulated site points and ligand points which will predict the affinities of the compounds in the data set when bound in the optimal manner and in this uh, modified penalty function is used so that the ligand remains within the binding site so when you are changing the conformation of the ligand the ligand may try to come out of the uh, binding site so in order to keep it in the uh, binding site we need to have some uh, restraints so these restraints are nothing but the modified penalty function so the modified penalty function is used so that the ligand remains within the binding site next coming to incremental construction algorithm so in the incremental construction algorithm so this is the binding site of the protein and uh, here the first step is we take a base fragment within the ligand and this base fragment is chosen such that it forms the most rigid part of the molecule such as the ring system the base fragments are then docked into the binding site and uh, clustered to remove similar orientations and uh, similarly each fragment is added so that the ligand is uh, bond into the active site and each docked orientation of the base fragment that represents the starting point for the conformational analysis of the rest of the ligand so it appears time consuming but the results uh, but it results in effective search criteria since the protein active site so here the only constraint is the protein active site the protein active site only acts as the constraint for this docking problem and the base fragment is taken 
and each and every fragment is added to the base fragment such that it fits into the docking site and the best fit uh, molecule is taken so this is about incremental construction algorithm and uh, this algorithm is used in dock and uh, flexx programs so out of this i have not mentioned uh, for uh, distance mat geometry algorithm which uh, software is used so if you have watched the video till the end so my question to you is so where is uh, distance geometry algorithm used that means the distance geometry algorithm is which used in which software so if you know the answer give me the answer in the comment section and i want to see how many have watched the entire video till the end i hope the video is uh, useful to you and uh, i try to make the best uh, explanation for the docking uh, problem actually i have to say one more thing is that previously i loaded uh, uh, one video for docking but i was not satisfied with the explanation i have given so again i had to prepare and uh, Uh, for the uh, explanation so some uh, topics in this algorithms were bit uh, confusing so i had to prepare again and uh, upload the video so that's why i uh, i'm uploading the video second time again for this i have removed the previous video i hope you like the video and if you like the video then do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and uh, do not forget to give the answer to my question that is distance geometry is used in which uh, docking program thanks for watching see you in the next video